Anyway, you guys, if you have any injuries, issues, conditions, concerns, things about your body that you might need to modify, please honor your body. Shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, feet, wrists, backs, necks, all the things, right? If you need a modification, obviously I'm not there in front of you to give it to you, but hopefully you know some of your modifications of head and shoulders down or back staying neutral, etc. Okay? So we are going to use the mini ball for our workout today. And uh, I'm going to start with our um, normal little warm up of taking a big breath in. So I want you guys to take a deep knee bend, breathe in, reach your hands to the sky, and then bring it back down. Bend your knees and then reach to the sky, fill your lungs with air, let it all out. One more time. Big breath in, and exhale all of the air. Reach up high, and then I want you to roll down. Hold the ball in your hands if you have it. And I forgot to mention, if you don't have a ball, a pillow, a towel, a sweatshirt will work. Balls work better though. All right, reach it up and then round down like a waterfall cascading off the mountain. Nod your chin, peel yourself down bone by bone by bone. See if you can touch the floor with the ball. Maybe not this early and we haven't warmed all the way up yet. And then articulate your spine all the way back up top. Let's do that one more time. Big inhale and then exhale, round down. Peel your spine like you're peeling off of a wall, one bone at a time. And then peeling all the way back up, overhead, big inhale. We are going to do one more to put the ball between our ankles. So roll yourself down. Put the ball on the floor. I'm going to turn and face you here. Put the ball on the floor between your heels or ankles, they're hot. And then I want you to find a small Pilates V. So you're not turning way out, just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna show you some. Since you're between my pictures, my Pilates art, okay? Heels together, toes apart, just small. And then I just want you to find that kind of wrapping sensation of your thighs, okay? So you feel those muscles all connect a little energy up to the midline of your pelvic floor, okay? And now from here, we're just going to take our arms out to that second position or unhugged tree position. And then I just want you to lift your heels and lower your heels, just small. Just a little shift to the toes and then to the heel. Find that your big toe and little toe are both in contact with your floor or mat. Three, two, and one. Now, keep those heels down. Think Pilates V footwork on the reformer. So we're going to start, knees track over that second toe. We lower down, bring the hands in front of you, and then open back up. Bend and bring it down, and then back up. A little bend, your knees are not shooting out past your toes, but you're sliding down a wall. So again, that spine is as neutral as you can keep it. And we're going down, and up, and down, and up. Four, squeezing that ball, especially on the way tall. Breathing. Three, two, one. Now bring it down about halfway, and then come up a little bit, and down a little bit. Use your muscles, no bouncing, a little push and pull, as if we were doing a half range of motion on the reformer. For four, Three, two, and one. All right, parallel feet. Ball is still between our ankles. We'll change it in a minute. So it's down there low, just enough energy to feel that your feet are level. Big toe, little toe, heel bone, tripodish of your feet, right? Arches lifted. Okay, send that booty back. We're gonna do our, like if we were heels on. So we're gonna sit back and then rise up. Hinge hips and knees, abs draw in. Your abdominals are on the whole time. I'm just gonna reach my hands forward on this one. And back, keep a little pressure on the ball the whole time. Feel a little bit of that inner unit, pelvic floor, taking the elevator up <laughs> the center of the body. Abdominals keeping your spine stable. No arching, tucking or twerking that back. Keep it neutral. Send those hips back, four. 
three, when we're doing the standing leg work, a yoga block would work instead of a ball, but not so much behind your back. It's a little firm for that. <laughs> three more. Two more. I want you to hold this one down low. Find your low spot. It doesn't need to be 90 degrees, just your spot. Come up about four inches, like the side of your hand width, and then pull it back down. Feel the hamstrings pull it down. And those quadriceps work eccentrically or lengthening. So they're still helping control the movement, right? And then we're just doing a small range for four more. No bouncing. Three, other muscles, not momentum. Two, hold it still right here. Just stay. Just stay. And then stand all the way up. Okay. Now, we're going to take that ball up to between our thighs. Words up right from an advertise. <laughs> okay, so our feet are still parallel, ball width apart. And then whatever you want to do with the arms, I'm going to take mine out to the side and then maybe open my arms up because that will make my shoulders more neutral, right? And then from here, lift up to your tippy toes, lower back down, just like we did at the beginning. But try to feel like you're peeling your feet up and down. Think that ankle articulation. Four, three, two, one. Now, hold it there. And now we're going to sit back into a squat again and lift the arms overhead and then bring it up. So here's my side view. Up and down. If your shoulders say no thanks overhead, do something different with your arms. Sit it back. Now squeeze in the ball on the way tall. Slight release, but not enough to drop it. Four, three, two, hold. Now, put a little extra weight on your um, left foot and then to your right foot. Just feel that transition. Pull your shoulder blades down your back and just give me a little weight shift. Now bring it and hold it in your neutral. Lift your arches, big toe, little toe. Can you wave your toes? Okay, lift those arches, heel bones down. All right, right here, give me a little arm scissor. Arm scissor. So we're working on spinal stability, scapular stability, mobilizing shoulders in our little arm scissors. We often do these laying on our back, right? Well, we can do it standing up for a different challenge. The shoulders should not be hiking up to your ears. Last time, stand all the way tall and a sneaky way to make you hold your squat. Okay, so we did our narrow turnout, our parallel. Now we're going to our wider Pilates stance. Those feet are not pointing to the wall away from you. They're still just on that small turnout. Ball in your hands and we're going to give it a little squeeze. Okay, so again, belly in, shoulders down, and we're just going to press the ball out, pull it back into your sternum. Press it out, pull it in, right there at that breastbone. Reach it out, pull it in. Reach it out, pull it in. Feel a little energy in the arms, and then make sure those arches are suction cupped up, not falling in that instep, but not rolling out to your pinky toe. Pull it in, reach it out. Pull it in, breathe, four. Feel the energy zipping up from the floor up. Four more. Are you still pulling in those shoulders with that ball? Three, two, one. Now find about halfway down. Holding the elbow slightly soft, a little pressure on the ball. Ready? Go down two inches above and below halfway. So two inches below, two inches above. Still that four inch little push and pull. It's not a bounce. It's that mid range, small range. Four. Three, two, and all the way up. Okay, from here, we're gonna go down and do ankle lifts. So lower down, find the spot you can hold it. Abs are in, spine neutral. Lift your heels, lower your heels. If your balance doesn't like that, go one at a time, or do both. Legs are still working. Find the spot you can hold it. Keep some pressure on the ball. Squeeze as you lift for five, four, three, two, one. Heels down. 
rise all the way up. Okay, to emulate a little bit of our single leg footwork, we're going to put the ball on the mat or floor and put your right foot on top of the ball. Okay, the goal is hips are still level, so you can put your hands on your hip bones as that helps you tell if you start to hike it up. So we're going to keep that, I have it under my right foot, my right tailbone sits bone shining to the floor. Okay, we're going to keep weight on both feet, but most of it's going to be on the standing leg. Okay. Now sit back into that same little squat like position. Rise back up. You could use a chair or a wall if you need a balance aid. But we're not doing anything crazy here. We're not standing on the ball, I promise. <laughs> sit it back. That knee's not going forward, right? You're sitting back. Yeah, I'm going to pretend I can see through the, <laughs> through the camera lens until you all are doing perfect form. Always find your range of motion. You'll feel that little instability in that right leg the one on the ball, if you're doing left, the one on the ball, <laughs> four more, three more, two, last full range, now bring it down, find your spot, hold your spot, now push and pull the ball a little bit forward, a little bit back, uh huh. just roll it a couple inches, like toe to heel, or midfoot to back foot, four, three, two, one, Stand all the way up, and then we're going to switch. We're going to put the left leg on the ball, or the other one. We all have a steady side. All right. Sits bone, pointing to the ground, abs in, spine neutral. Ready? Same thing, other leg. You should feel the standing leg do a lot of work. This one's just trying to challenge your balance. I have that ball just towards the toes of my other foot, not too far away, but not directly behind me either. Now, sit down, and rise tall, full range. Sit and stand. Sit and stand. Oh, don't let that ball go anywhere. Can you keep that hip bone down? They're level. Uh huh. Breathe. Sitting back. Tailbone goes back. Pressing into the floor. Standing tall for four more. Three. Two, last full range. Now bring it down, find your spot. Again, neutral spine, abs in, just a reminder in case you needed it. Now, roll the ball forward and back, just small. Forward and back, feel those abdominals working. Draw them in, uh-huh. Four, three, two, just small. Last one, stand it up, release the ball. All right, so we got narrow, wide, parallel, a couple ways, heel raises, and our single leg. So we'll call that our, our footwork warm up as we would do in our reformer class. So bring yourself down to the floor, and we're gonna bridge, okay? So uh, start with the ball in your hands, and then find your sit bones. Sometimes I do a little wiggle side to side to find the sitting bones and get off the, off the tissue or flesh, right? Now, roll yourself down till you're laying flat on your mat. Yeah? Okay. We're going to hold the ball in between our legs. You know we all like that. And then I want your legs to be um, ball width apart. So you don't drop it. Parallel. Now, your heels should be close-ish to your hips, but not so close you'll go crazy with your range. But not too far away from you either. Rock heel to toe a second, and then get those feet planted. Big toe, little toe, heel bone. Even pressure on the inside and outside of that heel bone. And then arches lifted. So don't let those feet fall in. Now just a little squeeze on the ball. We're going to do a little pelvic rock before we go all the way up. So from here, you're going to just imprint your spine, squeezing the ball as you exhale. Inhale back to your neutral. So you may have a little space under your low back. And then as you imprint, it gets a little smaller or compresses down. If you have a big lordosis or sway back, you might find that a little towel or like our little mouse pad um, at the studios can feel nice under your back. All right. Now, still with a little pressure on the ball, so your legs stay still. Can you tip your pelvis right to left so you keep those little hip points and you think one goes up? The other goes up. So if we were on our clock, 
three and nine would be going side to side. So you're not squeezing your butt to do this. You're using your abdominals, drawing down. Yeah, y'all find that? You guys are gonna be so good at Pilates principles when we're all back in the studios. Okay, so now we're gonna peel up if that's appropriate for you. And I really think it's safe for 99% of you, even if you have a little osteoporosis. But when we're in the studio and your feet are up on something higher, we don't want that much pressure. But when you're on the mat, I actually think it's okay. Really, I do. All right, so a little pelvic tilt. And then peel your spine up, bone by bone by bone. And knees point over toes, hips are open on the front side, abs are compressing. Inhale, keep a little pressure on that ball and melt it back down. Because we articulate and move through daily life, so if we can get our abdominals to control it, I really think we're okay there. A little squeeze, and peel it up. Knees reach over toes, spine goes nice and long. Breathe, and then melt it back down. But if you feel safer hinging, always hinge. A little mobilization usually feels good. So again, a little pelvic curl, and then Feel your spine up, knees, reach over toes, hold and squeeze your ball for five, and four, and three, two, and one. And then melt yourself down nice and slow, bone by bone by bone. All right, so while the ball is between our knees, I would like you to bring your legs to tabletop. Ball is still between your knees. Legs are in that 90-90, keeping the ball. You're going to see this today with the weather in the DFW area. We're going to windshield wipe our legs. So take your ankles out and then back in. So we're internally rotating from the hips and our feet are just going away. We're keeping a squeeze on the ball. And I know most of our windshield wipers go the same way if you're going to be technical, but it's a little windshield wiper. You should feel deep in those hip flexors and in that hip socket. You should feel kind of good. And then bring it in. Now, Take the little ball and put it between your ankles or your feet, wherever you think you can hold it. I like it just below my ankle bone, kind of between my heel bone, okay? Now, we're still in that tabletop. Now, open and close, so now you're more like butterfly wings. Still at that 90 degree hip angle, if that's working for you. And then we're opening and closing, externally rotating the hips, and then bringing them back in. And if you can cross a little bit from that midline and honor your hip, if your hip doesn't like this, keep it smaller. Don't skip it all together unless it increases pain in the joint. If it's the muscles, I'm okay with that, right? Four, three, two, and one. Put the ball and feet on the mat. Put the ball under one foot. Okay. Now, again, find that full foot, toe, heel, arch on the ball. Keep the ball level. Arms down by your side, level one. Fingertips up, but on your elbows, level two. Hands to the sky, level three. Pick your level, okay? We're gonna brace the abdominals and we're gonna hinge or pelvic lift. Think drawbridge, okay? Lift up in one piece. Your legs are not the same height because one's on the ball. Lower it back down. Again, you can go onto your elbows, and then you're a little less stable. Or you can reach your hands to the sky. Hinging up and down. Feel like you're compressing abs and opening the front of the hip. Think more about that than just squeezing your glutes. Your glutes will fire as a result of those hip muscles on the front and abdominals working. Two more. Hold this one up. Again, whatever stability level you need. I'm going to bring my hands down for this. Roll that ball leg, for me it's left, all the way straight. And then pull it back in. Keep your hips level. Don't let it drop. Can you pretend you have that contractor level across your hips and the bubble stays in the middle? I'm going to have to get one of those for the studio. So we can check your hips. <laughs> Four more. Three. Oh, that right leg's warm. Two, one, hips back down. All right, if you need a little like stretch out that leg that was doing the majority of the work, you can. And then put that leg on the ball, or foot on the ball, and then find that same starting bridge position. All right, arms down, hands up, arms up. Pick your level. So zip up the belly, brace those abdominals so you're nice and stable in that whole spine. 
and then push the hips up to a straight line from your shoulder blades to your knees. Knees reach long, and then hinge those hips back down. Again, pick your level. Hands up if you want more stability challenge. Elbows down if you want a little less, and palms on the ground if you want to feel super safe. You pick. <laughs> You're not going to fall off your mat, but find your stability that you can keep that back nice and neutral as you just move from that hip joint. Again, think about that left side oblique especially, compressing that abdominal area as you open the hip and think quadricep gets long in that position, reaching. Yeah, your glute's working a lot, but instead of just thinking squeeze glute, glute think about all those other parts working. Four, it's a co-contraction. When you activate the front side, and move through the joint, the back side has to work. Two, hold this one up, keep those hips level, roll the ball out and in, okay? Can you straighten it all the way and pull it in? Oh, if you need to come down out of this sooner than I tell you to, it's always okay, right? I can't see you. <laughs> but you always honor your body and do what feels right for you. Four more if you can. Three, don't just speed it up. <laughs> Two, and one. Hips back down to the mat. Straighten that leg up if you need a little stretch. Feels nice. All right. So while we're on the mat, we're gonna go ahead and work up those abs. You might remember in our classes, we usually do footwork, bridge, and abs. So we're gonna do that today. All right. So ball in your hands. I want you to bring your right leg to tabletop and put the ball right below your knee on your right thigh. Left leg's just gonna stay on the mat. Now, we're gonna wake up the obliques on that right side a little more. So now I want you to push your hands into the ball, pull your knee into the ball. Neither one is going anywhere, but you're feeling that energy on that right side of your torso. And then relax it, yeah? Do that again. Push and pull evenly, you don't go anywhere. If you don't have a ball, you can just use your hands. You can push your knee into your hands and your hands into your knee. Shoulders are down and open across the collarbones. One more time, push and pull, push and pull, and then lower that right foot. Same thing on the left, right below your knee, on your thigh, your hands or the ball, and then pull your knee into the ball, push your hands into the ball, you're not going anywhere, feel that left side oblique, open up, and then release. And push and pull, push and pull, push and pull, and release. Push and pull, push and pull, push and pull, and release. All right, we're gonna bring both legs up to tabletop, so right leg up, left leg up, you can keep head and shoulders down if you need to, or come up into your chest lift. So we're gonna put the ball on the right thigh again, just like we started with. Take the left leg out long, maybe curl your head and chest up if that's okay with you, and pull that right leg in as the left reaches. And then switch it for single leg stretch. So you're just barely switching the ball, not rotating the torso. Pull in as you reach, pull in. Pull, 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 and rest it down. Okay, so double leg stretch. We're going to scoop those knees into the ball, reach the ball overhead, bring it right back, okay? So tabletop legs. Again, you can keep head and shoulders down if you need to. That's always okay. So you're going to pull legs close together, parallel. Pull your knees into that ball. Maybe you're in that chest lift. And then arms and legs go away from each other and then pull it back in. It's slow motion, you guys. Inhale, reach. Exhale, scoop and pull into the ball. Inhale, reach. Exhale, scoop and pull in. Just three more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, scoop and pull in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, scoop and pull in. Last time. Scoop and pull in, in, in. Rest it down. Yeah, right? Slow, sometimes harder. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do crisscross. So if you bring the ball, you can bring it outside of the hands and just do a little like rotate, rotate, okay? That's one option. My advanced option is to hold the ball between your elbow and your knee and rotate. Scoop together to grab the ball, rotate the other way. You can keep the ball in your hands or try to grab with your elbow and twist and twist. <laughs> you might lose your ball if you're a novice at this ball pass with the elbow. 
I like this one a lot. It keeps you honest on the twist. Twist, let's do one more each side. Rotate those shoulders, rotate, center, and bring it down. Yeah, fun, right? Okay, so we're gonna do a little more core, but we're gonna bridge up and put the ball under our sacrum, tailbone. So not in your low back, but on your bum, okay? You can hold on to the ball, or your hands in the mat, or your hands wide. I'm just gonna keep mine down on my side, okay? So now I want you to find that little slight imprint. So we're just thinking those pelvises tip just a little bit by shortening the abdominals. So you think ribs and hips gets a little bit closer. There is space under my back, but it's a little bit smaller. And then bring your legs to tabletop, okay? Stay nice and steady, open across those collarbones. Keeping the knee at 90, extend the hip so the thigh moves so the toe taps towards the floor. If going all the way to the floor does not work for you, that's okay. But we're just gonna do our little toe taps here. Finding those abdominals to stabilize. So don't let your back change. As we lengthen that leg down, that's where that challenge comes from. One more each side. I started with right. Now left and bring it in. Go ahead and hug your knees in a little closer to release that a second. Okay, we're gonna take this to scissors. You don't go as low, but we're gonna think more about the bottom leg going away from us than just the one coming towards our face. So legs straight up, find your little imprint, spine neutral, hands in place on the mat, and then we're gonna take one leg down, and it should get pretty open in that hip, right? And then bring it back up. And the other leg down. Find your degree of scissor that you can stabilize your spine. And now you can add that little one, two, up to the top. Exhale, exhale, up to the top. Reach, 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 reach. Legs as straight as you can keep them, or you could have stuck with that toe tap, remember? Yep. Reach, reach, one more time each leg. Abs are working to stabilize you. And then both legs up, hug them in for a second. Okay, we're gonna do um, frogs from here. So if you'll go kiss the heels together, toes open just a little bit, so then our knees are turned out. Find that tabletop position in your little turn out position. Keep heels kissing, and then reach out, point your toes, zip it all up on that diagonal line. And then flex the feet and pull it back in. The feet articulation is optional, but try it. They pull your feet to the seat. Zip it out long. Pull your feet to your seat. Zip it out long with control. Don't let those knees flop out to the side. They're pulling in within the frame of your body not wider than. Reach it long up, oh, pull those abs in. Reach, reach, uh-huh. Last two. Hold this one out, reach it long. Now let's try a little crisscross. Right over left, left over right. Find inner thighs, pull it together, pull it together. And hold. All right, back up to the sky, hop it in if you need to. We're gonna do double leg lowers for our last move in this position. So both legs up, ever so slightly turn out, wrap those thighs, abs in, hold that neutral tip imprint. Imprint is where I'd like you to go, but don't let yourself go back past it. So if you lose it, you went to neutral, right? All right, now lower your legs four to six inches or all the way down to the diagonal, and then scoop it back up. Breathe whichever pattern works best for you. Some find inhaling down and exhaling up to work better, and some feel the exhale as they catch the legs and inhale to bring them back up. Either one's okay. Just no holding your breath below. Give me three more. Three, find your range. Don't let that back move. Two, <laughs> last one. And bring it in. Feet down to the mat. Bridge up to remove the ball. All right, from here, I would like you guys to roll to your belly. Legs out long, think inner thighs kind of to the sky. So we're just rotating into as neutral as we can, but separate your feet the width of your mat. We're gonna take the ball out long in front of us. Your pubic bone presses down, your belly button lifts, okay? Now, we're gonna do a little squat. Your hands are on the ball. I want you to press down into the ball, 
and then just think, slide your shoulder blades down and come up into just a little baby swan. Your lowest rib just came off the mat. And then lower back down. So press into the ball, pull the abs in, pubic bone down, and then lift from the shoulder blades sliding down back. And then bring it back. And then pull it back and bring it up. One more time. Pull it up, you can go a little further if that works for you. And then bring it back down. Okay, while, um, while we're here, we're gonna do swimming. So hands are gonna stay on the ball, and I want you to think, when you lift the right leg, push down with the right hand. So that would mean the left hand or opposite arm got a little bit lighter, but we're not gonna leave the ball. So right leg lifts, right hand pushes down, which lightens the amount of pressure on the left. And then bring it down, opposite side. Left leg lifts, left hand presses down. Feel like you're opening across the front of that hip. Slow motion swimming. We're going for a, <laughs> a nice leisurely swim. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Last time. And then bring it in. You can let the ball go or bring it to one hand to press up. We're going to come to all fours. If um, kneeling, you need an extra cushion, you need to roll your mat up on your knees, put a little pillow or a pad there. Okay. We're going to go into a quadruped position. I have my left hand on the ball. Okay. And then we're going to stay in a, you can have feet flat or tucked under. We're not going up to anywhere right now. Now we need to find neutral spine, so pull those abs in. Your hands are right about shoulder height. And then we're going to do a little push-up. This is a nicer push-up, though, other than the ball, because we're just going to hinge at the hips and come back up, okay? So we're going to bend elbows and lower down and press up. Try to keep your wrist as neutral on that ball as you can, meaning decreasing the amount of wrinkles. So you're tipping forward and up. A little asymmetrical, but nicer push-up. You can go to your toes if you want. I'm not falling off my raised mat today. <laughs> Three, two, and one. Sit back, roll the ball forward. Sit back in that child's pose. And then I want you to pull the ball in around your spine to come back up to that high nail. Put the ball under the right hand. Same thing, if you wanted a little extra challenge on the second side, you could open your hips and be on a knee push up and go down and up. It's a whole lot more wobbly that way. I am totally fine with you staying with the hip hinge. If you want to stay even there, or you can come to your knees. Four more. Three. Two. And one. Sit back. Roll the ball forward. Sit back as much as you can towards your heels and hips meaning if it's okay with your hips and knees. And then roll the ball towards you, round your spine up, okay? If you're still okay kneeling, we're gonna put the ball behind the left thigh. If your wrists need a break, you can come down to your forearms. Why don't we all come down to your forearms? Now, you're gonna have to work harder to stay neutral in that spine, because if you look up, you're gonna go into a butt up position, I want a neutral spine. Elbows under your shoulders, almost like a little plank position. Now. Lift that ball side leg, which for me is left, in the air. You're just going to flex the foot, and the hamstrings are just active enough to not drop the ball, okay? And then knee towards the floor, and up. It's a hip hinge. Really draw your abdominals in as you lift and lower that leg. For four more. Three. Two. And then hold it up, hold it up, lift it an inch, an inch, from the foot, the gluteal fold, yeah, four, three, two, and one, bring that knee down, hover it, lift your belly, open the leg to the side, and back in, that old fire hydrant move Jane Fonda made, <laughs> made, um, common in workouts, right? It's abduction and adduction of the hip. For three, and two, and hold this one out there. 
Now lift your heel to the sky, heel down. Internal and external rotate those hips. Mm -hmm. It's like you're trying to bring your heel to your other heel. Or uh -huh, try not to rotate your spine. Two, one, bring it down. We're going to um, put the ball between your knees for a second. We're going to tuck our toes under and we're going to go up into a pike. So stick your booty to the sky. Tailbone up, push away from the floor. It's that down dog shape. We're just trying to stretch out and lengthen that hamstring. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, ready? If you need to go to your forearms, you can, but we're going to come into a plank. I know, we have the other hip side to do. We're doing a plank in between. I'm wearing my plankster tank top today. we got to do a plank. Pull the abs in, push away from the floor. Every muscle in your body, but especially your abs and spinal muscles and your back muscles and your shoulder muscles <laughs> are active. And then bring your knees down. Take the ball, put it under the um, calf and hamstring on that right side or other leg if you didn't match right and left with me. Or in plank is position, hip and knee on that um, free side in line. And then we're going to flex the foot so the hamstrings are just active to hold the ball. And then the knee comes to the floor and up. Sorry I didn't mention it on the first side, but you could do this standing up, leaning against a wall, a chair, or a counter if kneeling doesn't work for you. So you could do a standing version, which you could do against the bar, right? Straight up and down for four, and three, two, hold this one up, now give me that inch, the inch, the little lift, you just lower an inch so you can lift back up. Don't hyperextend that back. Draw those abdominals in. They're stabilizing, compressing in that spine. Three, two, one. Now bring it down. Just hovering off the mat. Are you sinking in your shoulders or are you still strong in them? The other are slightly protracted, right? Okay, open out to the side. Out to the side. That fire hydrant. <laughs> Four, three, two, Last one, hold it out there. Now rotate, heel to the sky, heel to the floor. Internal and external. Your butterflies flying around. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Bring it down. Put the ball back between your thighs. Hands on the mat, or you can stay on forearms if you need to. Tuck toes under, crop back out to that pike down dog elephant shape. Can you walk your toes in a little bit closer and still push your heels up to the sky? Feel that stretch in those hamstrings, okay? Now, without losing your ball, so it's small, give me your little running or prancing. Push away from the floor and just give yourself a little calf stretch. You can adjust where you stand. Four, three, two, one, Push back, back, and now walk your toes out a little bit. Bring yourself back to your plank. Come down to your forearms. Ball still between your thighs. Tap your knees. Lift. They don't actually have to touch. Keep your spine still so the booty's not popping up. The knees are tucking under. Scoop. Or you just hold the plank. Scoop. Scoop. Uh -huh. Four. Three. Two. One, hold your plank, squeeze the ball. Zip up your inner unit. Five, four, three, two, one. Knees down, hips down. Come into your little sphinx or little swan. Breathe. Bring yourself all the way down to the floor. Take your hands behind your back. Press them down toward your tailbone and open your heart a little bit. Just keep a little squeeze on the ball, and then lower back down, okay? So elbows come to the mat, and we're just gonna lift the hands up, lift the legs up a little bit this time, and we're gonna come into that flying position. You can separate your hands if you need to, or really feel that chest and shoulder stretch if you can interlace your fingers. But if they don't, if you can't keep them interlaced, that's okay. Lower down the other way. Take a big breath, and then reach it long. Breathe, pull the belly in, and release it. All right, bring yourself up from there. Okay, we're going to side plank. 
We're on the home stretch, you guys. Okay? I'm losing my pen. Always doing this. Okay. I'm going to put the ball under my um, iliac crest or right on the side of the pelvis. Okay? And then I'm going to straighten both legs out. You can keep your bottom leg bent in line with the other. Elbow under your shoulder. And I just want you to inflate the ball. Deflate it. So it's our little hip drop, right? So you can have both legs straight. You're not lifting so high that the ball would roll away. Because if you do, you're going into a side bend. And I just want you to do a little dip down and up. That bottom arm is strong. And again, bottom knee could be bent to take some of your weight off. Four, three, two, one. Ball removes. Sit up. Cross-legged or in that Z-sit position. We're going to mermaid the ball under the same side that was just down and then roll it out. All we have left is our side bend planks and mermaid on the other side, y'all. So right here on that home stretch. Roll the ball out a little bit. Lift the ribs. Stretch out that side body. Stretch out the shoulder. And then pull it back up. Counter stretch the other way. Ball goes to the sky. Ah, should feel good. Bring it up. Ball to the other side. Swivel around. So the ball's not under the waist or rib cage. It's going to go under the pelvis. So you got to get your forearm on the mat. Ball under the pelvis. So again, legs in line with each other, but bottom leg can be bent or both legs can be straight. Get super strong in that shoulder, and then we're just going to inflate the ball, deflate the ball. So it's a little lateral flexion of our spine in our little hip drop plank. Don't bounce off the ball, <laughs> but feel that. Hip drop. Hip drop. Inner thighs are zipped together, no matter which position you chose. They may not be touching, but feel the energy of them trying to connect. Four more. Three, two, and one. And then come up to your mermaid Z-sit. You can have those legs out front or cross-legged. Most of you know that by now. Left hand on the floor, right hand out to the side. Roll the ball out, lift the rib cage, head in line with your spine still. And then bring it back up, okay? Do that again. Roll the ball out, stretching the shoulders and the waist. Top side, biggest stretch. Bottom side, still a little bit of one. Yep. One more. Roll it out. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Hold the ball in your hand and counter stretch the other way. And then bring it up. We are going to take those legs out long. I have to turn sideways. You can face your camera. Okay. Ball on your thighs. Fingertips on the ball. We're going to spine stretch forward. So roll the ball. You can flex your feet and make them a stopper, or you can point your toes if you got a lot more mobility. I want you to start by rolling the ball with your fingertips, flexing the upper spine, rolling the ball forward, pull your belly in. Think lengthen that whole post of your chain. Breathe in. And then lock the ball back up your legs. Bring them above your knees. Press down into the ball and pull your elbows down. Open your heart. We're going to do that one more time. Roll the ball out. Roll it out, roll it out, roll it out, roll it out. Ah, breathe. And then roll the ball back up, rebuilding your spine. When the ball is above your thighs, press down. Elbows down towards your hip bones. Lift your heart. Open your chest. Feel that stretch. And release. All right, you guys, there's my mini ball workout for today. Um, I hope you did it with me, <laughs> not just watch. But if you did, that's okay. You can always do it later.